We're back to the Neil Haley show. And what I've learned uh, in this last year, and I guess in other years, is how we just aren't staying safe when it comes to our security, especially cybersecurity. And my expert today is going to hopefully reassure me a little bit, but I don't think he will. He'll make me say I'm not doing enough. And I continue to try to work on two-step verification for my passwords, make sure that no, that not the same password for everything. I used to be so awful at that, sharing passwords to other people and really become safer. But there's so many different things. And my expert today, Greg Hanna, is going to help us, cybersecurity expert. Greg Hanna, Greg, how are you, man? Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate being on your show. All right. So let's, you have a topic for us and let's, let's go with it. I, I really do. You know, one of the biggest things that I see out there is ransomware issues. And, you know, when I met my first Shark Tank shark, it was Robert Hershevik. And I said, hey, Robert, you know, what drives you? And he said, you know, every day some little punk's getting up trying to figure out how to kick my bleep. You know, and I'm like, who are those little punks? He goes, you know, all those hackers and cyber terrorists out in the world, you know, how are they doing it? You know, I'm asking him, he's got a huge cybersecurity company in Canada and they're doing it through phishing, smishing, vishing, and now something really crazy, credential stuffing. So I'll take a few minutes to talk to you a little bit about phishing. Everybody's heard about that. You get these emails from Amazon, you know, hey, update your prime membership. You know, you get emails from FedEx and UPS and here's your tracking and people click on that stuff all day long. And what they're doing is they've weaponized this payload that gets loaded into your computer. And then the ransomware hangs out maybe 20, 30 days, executes, come into work one day or at your home and everything's locked down, frozen. They're wanting some Bitcoin, millions of dollars lately for larger companies. So email is a big hassle. Be really careful. Don't, don't click on stuff and really take a look at it. You know, you can read uh, where the link is going. If you hover over the link, you can read down at the bottom. Take your time. Don't be in a rush. Smishing, what's that? It's the same thing for your iPhone and Android and your handheld device. We've been getting these texts, especially when Facebook got hacked and all of their uh, users, uh, passwords, and all of their iPhones and email, all that mobile device got. Man, I get these things all day long. Click here. You just got a $500 savings on your AT&T yeah. bill, right? You know, and I what they're doing is they're- and these text messages. They come in these text right. messages. You're like, what? No, I'm not clicking that. Even though people think our phones are safe when we click something like that, and that's not the case, is it? That's not exactly, not at all. They're more susceptible even, especially these days, because people move fast with the text. They don't pay attention and it makes sense to them. AT&T, it's my phone click, done. Um, vishing, same thing with your voice. You know, people are getting called all day long from different telemarketers. They use VoIP over IP systems. You know, the numbers are hidden. You try to call back, you can't reach them. And what they're doing is they're trying to take advantage of you. They're trying to grab your credit card. They're trying to tell you, hey, you didn't pay enough on your taxes. You know, oh, this is going to expire. That's going to happen. So they're doing it now with their voice, you know, and they call that vishing. So you got to be really careful these days, especially if you're, you know, a little bit older, you know, um, you, you, you're really a victim. They buy these lists and then they just go after you. Right. So it's crazy stuff. Well, last thing I want to touch on real quick, because I'm sure we're running tight on time. It's called credential stuffing. And what's that all about? Well, credential stuffing is you've heard of the dark web. Yes. Yeah. So on the dark web, yeah. usernames, passwords, email addresses, all for sale that have been hacked, leached during a leak during a, bre a breach like Target or, or LinkedIn or any one of these places. And they take this and they put them into a like a bot, if you will, an automated program that goes out and then just attacks websites trying to log in. And they they just stuff credentials, you know, that they get online and then they break into accounts and they steal people's information. And that's been happening all over the place, even a well-known, you know, password. Uh, online security vault was hacked. No passwords were leaked, but they were still hacked with this technique. Oh, this, that's not good. Not yes, good sir. at all. Okay, so let's talk about, you talk about the, the whole thing about the password hacks and all this stuff. What should we do as you know, novices that are not cybersecurity experts like yourself? What things should we do right now to keep ourselves secure? Okay. Oh, perfect. Well, there's a few things you can do right off your bat. 
is uh, make sure that you're not running any out-of-date operating systems or software, keep things updated, keep the patching happening. You know, as soon as the patches are released and you feel comfortable about it, get them on as quickly as possible. Not just the operating system, you know, the Macs and the PCs, but also the third-party stuff like your Adobe Acrobat, the Java, all those different things that come up, the Chrome browsers, keep that patching happening. Next thing is to invest a little bit extra. Don't go for like the Norton and for the Symantec and all of that like crazy antivirus. Go for a next generation antivirus. I know they're expensive, but it's the best thing you can do. There are a couple of fantastic ones out there. CrowdStrike, Carbon Black, Sentinel One. Um, you got to get one of those. What they actually do is instead of using, you know, known viruses like on a list, like, hey, we know this is about, they actually allow zero day attacks to be killed right on the spot because they use artificial intelligence, machine learning and behavioral analysis instead of like saying, hey, this is a, a virus block against it, a known one. So that's really important to do these days. And then last thing of all is, you know, don't trust anything. You know, if you have any question about an email, weaponized PDF document, Excel, Word doc, link in the email, just delete it. If it's important, they're gonna write you back. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's, that's so true. They're, they're going to write you back and, and, and deal with it. So what about, what about password protection? What are your thoughts on password protection? Well, there are a couple of really good ones. First of all, make sure that you change your passwords every day uh, on, on sites that are critical to you, such as you know, banking and so on. And by changing them every day, what I'm meaning is make sure that you enable the two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication. Those are the little numbers the bank sends you and clicks on that. Every 90 days, you're going to change your actual password. And you're going to want to use a, some phrases. You're going to want to use uppercase, lowercase numbers, um, all kinds of characters. And the best thing to do is like in the, in the world of of compliance, there's things called SOC compliance. And if you wanna be like super careful, never use a dictionary word. If you can find the word in the dictionary, don't use it. Oh my, yeah. wow, so the, because they just figure it out, right? That's it, yeah, they have these uh, programs that just go ahead and they keep trying and trying and trying and trying and trying and then eventually Why do they get choose, it. Who do they choose to try to log into people's accounts? Who, do they, do they go to everyone or what's, what's, what keeps you, makes you more vulnerable for them to go after you? Yeah, you know, it's it's usually not a home person except through email. Everybody's a target if you have an email address. It's non non denominational. They don't care. They'll just take you right. Um, if you have a business, you have a firewall, you have a server. You know, they're scanning all day long for what's called a port. That's the the ports that are facing the internet. Your connection to the internet. They're scanning those all day long. They're looking for exploits, things that are not patched, things that are open, things that have been exploited and haven't been taken care of. One of the biggest ones is what's called remote desktop protocol, RDP. Most companies have that because they want a terminal server in, they want to connect in from home uh, real fast and easy, but that is the number one exploit for a manual ransomware attack. Wow, and for the COVID that probably happened a lot. Yes, considerable. All right. Where can people go to find information on you and stuff? Where can they go? Well, if they want to find out about me, they can go to uh, www.tossc3.com uh, or you can go to our website for our zero day protection service, which is neverpayaransom.com. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate you. Pleasure to be on. Thank you. You're listening and watching the Neil Haley Show. We'll be back in just a moment.